to another episode on the Bible Explained. Avery here with your co-host Isaiah back again to continue our series with the study of thought, the watchers, and other angelic beings that have an influence into many different religions going all the way back until the beginning of time until today, modern society. And so we're getting to the bottom of what is actually happening. Are we truly worshiping the, the proper way that we need to worship? Um, we want we don't want to be ignorant. There's some things that we can control, some things that we can't control in our knowledge. Um, God has an infinite amount of knowledge and we are finite beings. So we're trying to figure this thing out here. So let's continue. We're going to get into Enoch. We're going to read a little bit in his book, uh, tie that into Genesis and other books of the Bible. And this is also going to lead us down to um, Thoth. Remember, this is all beginning with Thoth and he is considered on par with Enoch because they both were record keepers, right? But Thoth is also considered the record of time. We've mentioned that in the book of Daniel, when Daniel was giving uh, or interpreting his vision, there would be someone to come who would wreck the time so that way we would know when we are or where we are in time. And that's very, very important. I'm going to show you some clues here today in today's video. So stick to the very end so that you can see and get an idea of what time we actually are in. Isaiah, how does that sound to you? You ready to get into it? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to jam. Let's go. All right, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and open up, share my screen here. I'm going to go ahead and start with the word. I'm going to go to Genesis 4, starting at verse 17. It says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, and he built the city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methuselah, and Methuselah, or Methuselah, begat Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives, the name of one was Adah, and the name of the second was Zelah, and Adah bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jabal. His father was, he was the father of all those who play the harp and flute. And as for Zelah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Then Lamech said to his wives, Adah and Zelah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy sevenfold. 77. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God had appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, who Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call the name of the Lord. And this is the family of Adam. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day that were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. After he begot Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years 
and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. So as we see, the limit of their age is dwindling down the longer that man is in sin, in their sinful state. And when I read here in verse one of chapter five, when it talked about he made him in the likeness of God, it's almost as if God is describing a separate creation account, beginning with Seth. Why I say that is because in that study book that we read, it told us a definition for, I believe it was beast or something to the notion of the first race of man to, that was to crawl on his belly. Very interesting why we looked at that and how this is actually jumping off the page to me. But let me continue. Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel. After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Here we go. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I want to get into this section here where it says Enoch walked with God, and most people have translated that to be, well, he was the best example of what a man in a sinful state could be as far as his dedication to living out um, God's, God's word and his commandments back then. That is questionable. That could be true. Um, but here's the thing. Back then, men had many wives, right? We've read that just up, up above. Men had many wives. And now today, we now practice, we now see that as the practice of uh, polygamy, which most Christians abstain from and other belief systems abstains from. In this time, I believe Enoch did have several, several, several wives so that he can have many different sons and daughters. I don't think it was just one. So Isaiah, when you hear the word walked with God, how would you best describe what that looks like from the perspective of Enoch? that sounds like a close relationship uh it, it actually sounds like a, a christophany uh to me uh meaning or from what i gather is uh the word uh coming down before uh you know before his time as as being uh yahusha mm -hmm. so in other words you're saying that enoch could have walked with 
the pre-incarnate Christ, um, the second Godhead of the Trinity, right? Correct. And and, and just a just a little uh, side note or into that, and a, and a little plug. Um, if you guys read or or have read or look look out for uh, the first and second book of Adam and Eve, it really goes in to the uh, what what Adam and Eve uh, actually did, um, and more in depth into their lineage and their family, um, and it and we see uh, the word uh, the word of the the, the Most High. Uh, constantly coming down to commune with Adam and Eve. So once you read, once you guys read that and get a, a sense for it, 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 and coming back to scripture and, and reading uh, the Genesis account, it, it makes uh, much more uh, sense in, in, in that sense. Um, you know, cause we see the word come down constantly, you know, because we need him, you know, Exactly. Exactly. It's like there's so many times in the word where people are referred to as sheep. And the reason why that, that is, is because uh, sheep need direction. They are they have a they have a lack of sense of direction and they always heed the voice of their shepherd. Right. And sometimes if we don't have that shepherd, we can go any anyway, north, south, east or west. Yeah. So. And just a an, another little side note, you know, it uh when when reading the book of Adam and Eve, and you see with even in the first one hundred, uh, I, I, it's either one hundred pages or uh, one hundred chapters, we constantly see uh, the word of the Most High coming down and rescuing uh, Adam and Eve uh, from various uh, different things. Uh, it's very eye opening and and. I, I've thought to myself, I'm like, man, like, it seems like uh, uh, he, Yahushua would get just so annoyed and like bugged about, man, I got to come back down again. Like, you know, or you guys are our children, um, but that's not, you don't, that's not the case. You know, he, he, you, you see, and you sense his love, you know, and he, he wants us to ask him constantly and invite him into everything that, that, uh, that we're doing, um, and have him come in, whether it's, it's rescue, healing, loving, uh, comforting. He loves doing those things. Indeed he does. He loves to show out. And we read that in Hebrews, he who seeks him diligently, um, God will show up. He yeah. definitely will show. You just have to put in the time, put in the effort. Don't be terrified of it. Yeah. He will show up. When you mentioned that Enoch walked with God as far as dealing with the Christophany effect, which is the second Godhead of the Trinity, in our other discussion, previous videos where we talked about and you know, inside of this study guide here. And it gave us definitions of what's called false lords or false, false gods. And there were four. Um, and these four had put together, they're called, considered the triunes. Now we know that these angelic beings who call themselves the triunes, they can't create anything. In fact, uh, some of them have even taken on the term Yeshua. And that is a carbon copy of what his name really is. God is Yah, Y-A-H. And we get so many different derivatives to describe the Trinity from Yah. There's Yahuwah, Yahusha. And here, if you see, remember we talked about Loamal. He's a specific type of angel. He took on that term, uh, Christe, which translated to be Christ. And over here, we see the triunes and they've created, or that it's said to be that they are the founders of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why? To distract, right? To confuse so that when the real thing shows up, it's as if, oh, we've seen this before. We went over that already. Mm -hmm. And 
for Enoch to be considered the one to have walked with God, it absolutely has to be that second Godhead, or it could be an angel of the Lord that's separate from that second Godhead, because remember, he is born in a state of sin. And the reason why God showed up to Moses in the burning bush and he closed his eyes and kneeled down and hid his face was because he knew if he looked upon God in his sinful state, he would die. He got sure. burned up. He would die for sure. And who knows what that would look like? Uh, that's what God told Adam when they ran in the garden. He asked for their name. They hid and said, I was afraid. And so from that point on, God never showed up in in person, physically, in the presence on earth with man ever since then, because his presence will surely take away. Would you yes. would you say uh, would you say that the same two accounts for when uh, Israel or Jacob uh, wrestled uh, with the Lord and uh, when I believe it was it was uh, Abraham when they met in the tent? It was Abraham when they met in the tent, and it was uh, uh, Jacob when he wrestled with the Lord. And, you know, as we see here, sometimes Lord refers to an actual man, depending on his rank on earth, and sometimes it depends, it, it pertains to an angel mm -hmm. that is directly under the Creator, right? So in, in your example there, I definitely will say that that was the Christophany, or it was just an angel of the Lord of the Lord. Right. And I, and I have to say just real quick, uh, for those who are watching, um, if, if you guys really don't think that the enemy and or the adversary and his uh, dark uh, minions or other uh, fallen celestials would ever hijack the names of the most high, I, I don't I really don't know what to tell you. You know, because these uh, these false gods, these celest fallen celestials, they at the end of the day, they want to kill, kill, steal and destroy. They don't care any bit anything about anything else but that. So if if they have the masses, um, other uh, believers fooled that's just fine they they know they're where they're going in the end so a hijack is is nothing to them they don't care they absolutely don't so it's interesting to look at enoch and to hear about him walking with god and he was taken away um if you guys have seen that movie nope i was going to show that i think i can um, but if you've seen that movie, Nope, and it was really about this entity that was in the sky. And it was actually kind of like an angelic entity because we know that some angelic entities take on the form of um, weather elements. There's lightnings, there's, yep. there's earthquakes, there's the winds. And this one in this movie was depicted as a cloud. So it was the ultimate predator that whenever it came down, you didn't see it coming. Now, when it took its victims, it took them away in the form of a whirlwind. And that's exactly how we've seen or, or read the depiction of Enoch being taken away and Elijah, the prophet Elijah. So I say that because Enoch is very a, a proponent key character or key person when we talk about this subject here. Now, let's go into go a little bit back a recap for, um, for Thoth. Because Thoth is considered to be a reckoner of the times and seasons. Now, in this book, if you see this name here, Aisu, Sometimes I E S U S I E Seuss, I E Seuss, also Hey Seuss, J J Seuss, Jesus. I want you to keep these two names 
in the back of your mind as we go through this reading for this study today. So we read Genesis, we've read about Enoch. Now let's go to his accounts. I'm gonna read chapter one. Let's go all the way down into chapter six. All right, here we go. The words of the blessings of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the, the elect and righteous. He who, who will be living in the day of tribulation when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. And from them, I heard everything. And from them, I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them. So now he's going to write about these elect. The Holy Great One will come forth with his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens. And all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. But the righteous but with the righteous, he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them and they shall all belong to God and they shall be prospered and they shall all be pleased and he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them and behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly. We read this in the book of Jude, the canon of scripture, the book of Jude, right? And to, eat, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Chapter two, observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold, ye the earth and give ye to the things which the, take place upon it from first to last how steadfast they are how none of the things upon earth change but all the works of god appear to you behold the summer and the winter how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it chapter three Observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves, except 14 trees, which do not lose their foliage, but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes. Chapter four. And again, observe ye the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth, over against it and you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun and the earth also burns with growing heat and so you cannot trend on the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat this here is speaking of the verse in the bible where it talks about the end of days and there's going to be what's called a fervent heat 
where things are melting, it's so hot outside. Uh, the average homes that are built today, or even back then, it would not stand the heat outside. And so many people had to begin living in caves, living in the boulders of the rocks. You can go on the internet and see, uh, and type in and search rock caves, rock homes, ancient rock homes, and you'll see like little villas, like little hotels built into the, the ground to escape this fervent heat. Go to chapter five. There's probably a whole bunch of them in uh, the Grand Canyon. I think so. Yeah, they're all over. Observe ye how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. Wherefore give, give ye heed and know with regard to all his works, and recognize how he that liveth forever hath made them so. And all his works go on thus from year to year forever, and all the task which they accomplish for him and their task. Change not, but according as God has ordained so, it is done. And behold how the sea and the rivers in the manner accomplish, and change not, their task from his commandments. But ye, ye have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of the Lord. But ye have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O ye, hard-hearted, ye shall find no peace. Therefore, mm. therefore shall ye execrate your days and the years of your life shall perish, and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal execration, and ye shall find no mercy. In those days, ye shall make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous, and by you shall all who curse, curse, and all the sinners, sinners and godless, shall imprecate by you and for you the godless there shall be a curse and all the shall rejoice i wonder what they remove and there shall be forgiveness of sins and every mercy and peace and forbearance there shall be salvation unto them a godly light and for all of you sinners, there shall be no salvation. But on you all shall abide a curse. But for the elect, there shall be light and joy and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. And then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom, and they shall all live and never again sin either through ungodliness or through pride, but they who are wise shall be humble and they shall not again transgress, nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their life and their lives shall be increased in peace and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. Chapter six. Now here's where we get into the fall of the angels, the demoralization of mankind, the intercession of the angels on behalf of mankind. I'll read that again. The intercession of angels on behalf of mankind. The dooms pronounced by God on the angels and also the messianic kingdom. A Noah fragment. Here we go. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another 
Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Simjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed. And I, own, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's saying, I'm down, but I don't know if y'all are down. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't want to go down by himself. Yeah. <laughs> See, nobody wants to have a decent meal by themselves. They always want to have a meal with somebody else. You ever had yeah. that? Yeah, some company. Yeah. Or if you're going to get in trouble and steal or do something, you're like, look, I need a I need a confidant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was always, it. yeah, it was always, uh, you know, a cousin or uh, a friend right there with you or a sibling. Are you down? And they all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecation, imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it see once an angel makes up his mind there is no going back is it, it's almost as if, if they made up their mind and still didn't do the action it still counted as if they did it yeah that sounds like a huge difference between them and us huge difference because we have a body the wages of sin is death there has to be a remission of blood with angels even though that they can yield a body the blood in that body is not the same as us mm -hmm. being born of a man and a woman they are spirits that can just manifest into what looks like something that we all deal with every day but they are not us. However, they wish they were. They want children and they want sex, right? <laughs> now they're watchers. Right. They've been doing a whole lot of watching. That's what their problem was. Yeah. And they uh, they went ahead and passed that on to man. That's why the, uh, uh, the porn industry is so big. Yep. Number one leader right there comes from them. And they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Semjaza, their leader. Arakiba, Ramiel. Kokabiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Donnell, Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't talking, talking about Jones. <laughs> <laughs> we know a couple of Donnells, don't we? <laughs> Bada, Kijal, Asael, Armados, Batarel, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsapiel. Uh, Satadel, Turel, Jamjaya, Sariel. These are their chiefs of ten. So each of these leaders had other angels under them. And they all did this one thing. So we're going to stop there at chapter six. We'll continue at chapter seven in the next video, but let's go ahead and continue um, in this series here. So these angels came onto the land, uh, begot themselves children. We read about that in Genesis account, which led to the world fly, worldwide flood. They've had uh, children known as Nephilim. And this is where we get into Thoth, because if we go back into the Emerald Tablets, uh, we find that Thoth was describing his father, right? If I did a Quick word search, type in father, comes up Quick right question. here. Quick mm question. -hmm. So I, I asked a couple years ago, uh, a pastor, and I'm not going to drop any names, and 
I, my question was if the watchers weren't supposed to sleep with uh women human women uh why did why did the most high give them or the angels uh, uh seed why did why did he give them sperm good question good question another question to ask is why even put us near the tree that we wasn't supposed to have right you know and, yeah it's it's all about choice and he respects exactly. choice yep like i give you the power to do what you want to do mm -hmm. you know if you want to be successful you have the power to do it if you want to destroy your life you have the power to do that yeah and that's that's love right there ultimately I love, I love you enough to give you a choice are you gonna heed my word and, and follow me or are you gonna just make your own decision i love you enough to give you uh that respect to to make the decision mm -hmm. exactly that's man i couldn't do it and that's, that's what we have to have when we're <laughs> dealing with our our neighbors our brothers our sisters um, when explaining these things out to them, we have to show that same type of love. If God allows them to destroy their life, so be it. We can't get upset about it. We really can't. As much as there, it hurts because we know what they're going to have to endure, but that's something that God is going to have to take care of and work on within us. Yeah, we could just, we just have to keep, keep them in, in prayer and, and press in. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I believe that when we read about all of these different uh, angels here, these these chiefs, these leaders, um, and they also have tens of angels beneath them. Well, going back to the tablets here, it says that and of all these, this is the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, and of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father thought me or thought uh, ma we read that in that other study guide book he was the keeper of the great temple uh he was the link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands the ten islands right we go back these are their chiefs of ten Putting this together now. Go back and look at this. Thoth, his father is Thoth me. That means his father, Thoth me, is an offspring of one of these angelics and a woman on earth, which means Thoth me is a Nephilim being. That would mean that Thoth is a descendant of one of the Nephilims. He's not as strong as his father but he is stronger than the races of men. So Thoth is a half demigod, where mm. Thoth is a demigod. Okay. Yeah, because it would it would make sense that uh, that Thoth uh, would have some sense because as we deep as we dive deeper into the Book of Enoch, we see how crazy uh, these these uh, these Nephilim start acting. Um, and just the villainy and the wickedness that they're doing out of their, uh, out of their, out of their minds. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's what we get into the lords of Kim, of the, um, alchemy, the kemetics. Now these angels were teaching men metallurgy, how mm -hmm. to do things with vibrations to move certain rocks and heavy, um, megalithic I'm sorry, megalithic objects uh, without even using cranes or a hundred and thousand, a hundred thousand men to lift it. It was technology to do these things. Now, thought me, he was the one to go ahead and create the pyramids. Follow and directly under that was his son Thoth. We go back into our study guide books. Remember, I want to, I'm going to press this almost in almost every video. We have to understand these names. It is so important. If I go up there, I go back to this other book here. I want to go down to 
right here. Look at this, Thoth or Gabriel, who by inspiration, he founded the Mahometan nation. The Mahometan nation is the, the Middle East, Arabic, ISIS, all of that, Islam. This is the Mahometan nation. It was first mentioned in the book of Ezra, or Ezra. The book of Ezra is one of the apocrypha books. He also is cast into hell. When we look at the definition of hell, it is one of the heavens below the earth. So we have heavens that are in the earth, work your way up, and the higher you go, you're getting closer to the Almighty, the Great I Am. That's crazy. It says these four false gods were delivered out of hell by God, Jehovah's Son. They figured largely in the great wars against Jehovah in the time of the ancient Jews. Now, the ancient Jews are the Jewry, the Judeans. Hmm. Interesting. Besides these, there were many false gods and one great goddess, Ashtoreth. But all and she were both overcome and cast into hell by the founder of Christianity, the angel Loamon, through his great warrior servant, Thoth. Of the lesser attempts at false godheads, mention is made of Siawa, and this is where we get the Siawan, Saiyan. That story comes from this founder of the Swedenborgism and of Piod, the founder of Mormonism. Everybody thought that came from who? Joseph Smith. No, came from Piod. Avery, can you can you clarify something for me? <laughs> so, uh, in this reading, and again, we're you know we're taking uh, these books and these texts uh, with with a grain of salt, but how could how could uh Loamong cast the the founder or yeah thoth into uh into hell if they're if they're spo supposed to be on the same side good question let's go into see if i can find the definition for you for hell itself and that will give you a better better idea see if i cuz my mind goes to uh, insubordination ready? if it, you know if anything go ahead and read that. that what was that go ahead and read this okay uh hell anarchy in heaven especially in hada the lowest heaven where angels torment one another when an earthly tyrant dies evil spirit sees his newborn spirit for vengeance sake and cast him into hell okay hell is a term that is part of one of the heavenly levels now we know that there's at least three because of the accounts of paul but here we're finding there are multiple levels that operate within the i gotta go back to this word too right here within the S E S the unseen worlds, right? This is the it's synonymous with spirit world. So when you think of hell, you're thinking of the place where the damned goes based on how they live their life on earth, and then you see that great gulf that separates the people over in Abraham's bosom. That is Hades. We've been attributing Hades with the word hell. This is the okay. wordplay that they do in English. So you have Hades, you have hell, which is one of the heavens that operates within the angelic, angelic realms. And then you have the lake of fire that's to come in the future. The lake of fire is translated as the lake of Gehenna. They chose the word Gehenna because that's the place where uh, in New Jerusalem, where they used to give all of their trash, the dead bodies, all of the dead animals. It went to this burning refuge called Gehenna 
the flame was always there and there was always a place for the worms to live. Worms were, you know, in trash, eating up the body. So we call that Gehenna, the Lord, the Almighty, the Great I Am, has attributed the lake of fire as Gehenna because the flame never stops. And it is a whole different type of hell. I mean, it's it's something that you don't want to experience. And this is what Enoch was going to uh, tell us about as we continue to read on. He said, I don't ever wish this on anybody. Matter of fact, if anybody was to go, I'll go. Let me be the only one. That's how bad it was in wow. his vision that he received. He doesn't even want the angels to deal with that. Wow. It's just compound. It's just great. That's something you don't want to experience. So can I can I can I assume or have the right idea that the devil can't or the enemy can't cast himself out correct of or or do anything like that? No, he can't. There has to be there has to be order and chaos. So when you when you read up top that uh, Lo Amang, um he cast I forgot who who it was into hell. To me that sounds like just get as as far as like insubordination. Like okay, well if you guys want to act out and not act correct as far as the 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 agenda that we're trying to go with okay, you, you, you're going to get corrected and then you'll be able to come back. Exactly. It's just like when we read in the book of Jude and it says that these angels who had had sex with women, that they were cast into Tartarus, that is hell as well, right? That is a certain level within the, the S, the heavenly unseen world. Tartarus is a part of that. It's a whole different section. Um, now, when Loamong cast these two into hell, they must have done some type of unsubordination, like you said. And yeah, he says, look, I'm done with you for a time. This is where you're going to be as your punishment. punishment. And when you're ready, I'll release you until you go ahead and, um, you know, try to do good on our specific agenda. Now, right. this leads yeah. me into Satan, right? When I look up Satan, I looked him up as a definition here, and it gives us better insight or a little bit more as to these, these levels, these levels of heaven. One of those level, levels is called hell. He is the chief of the seven Hebrew tetracts. Tetracts. Now, what is tet as far as number and calculation? Have to look that up. Yeah, I tried to look up uh, Tetrak, um, anything on on Google, and nothing was really popping up. Tetrak um, says is having four rays. Tetrak in mathematics, because it kind of sounds like a tesseract kind of a thing. It could be just. A simple, you know how we look at the triune. Mm -hmm. So it could just be a number that's representing. Well, I mean, it, it makes me, it makes me think of uh, the sedly, uh, the sedly, the seven deadly sins. Um, the the nemesis of uh, of Captain Marvel, the real Captain Marvel, uh, Shazam. Yeah, that's good too. If we continue reading, we see the reckoned. He's reckoned the worst of all human passions, a leader, the captain of the selfish passions, um, the real self, selfishness. All of this describes him, right? Yeah, that sounds like the flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, I will sit above the highest sides of the north. He's, I mean, he's, he's trying to say he's going to sit above the, the great I am. Mm -hmm. And for him to do that, he knows he physically can't do it. But for him to do it, he's thinking, all I have to do is get all of his creation to worship me. Right. And he has done it. Yeah. The greatest yeah. trick he's yeah. ever pulled 
is that people don't believe he exists. Correct. And it's, it's going back to what I was mentioning earlier is, again, these, I'm a broken record, but these false gods, uh, Satan and his, his people, they don't care if it's a hijack. Because they're, I'm pretty sure they're thinking, well, what's the worst that's going to happen to me? I'm, I'm getting thrown into the lake of fire. I might as well uh, take uh, his creation with me. So, so why not hijack uh, the titles and things like that, right? Right. Right. They won't worship, so they they know what their 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 demise is going to be. So they say, well, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. And, and I mean, the way I see it is, is, is nothing wrong with uh, logically thinking about some of these things and having some common sense, you know, some people, some people just try to over spiritualize everything and, and miss it, you know? Exactly. Yes. I am enjoying this conversation, this going into the angels and looking at some of these books to give us a better understanding of what they do, their intent. What they're called is something very interesting for all of us to understand. Like we see here, we're a newbie. All of us have seen on the History Channel, the ancient aliens, and they've talked about the Anunnaki. And this is it. And they also talked about Enlil. They talked about Inki. We're gonna get into those two and what that's all about. Um, but Anabi, a newbie is the god of the scales. The Egyptian god of the scales is weighing left and right, which is, it's more, it's like two face, heads or tails, right? Uh, this is also where we get in DC comics, we get the, the god of chaos from a newbie. And we do know that going into the faith of Mohammedanism, um, you know, dealing with the Moors and dealing with some of those faiths over there, they believe that they are offspring of the Anunnaki as well. They truly believe that. Mm -hmm. So Anubi is one. We have Off, the God who submerged the continent of Pan, Apollo, the God who, the God to whose duty was assigned beautifying mortals in form and figure right this is how we get makeup this is how we get shaving of the legs this is how i mean a lot of those things men we appreciate but this is the introduction of, right this is the, or, the, the the idolatry part of it mm -hmm. and like exactly when you said idolatry they're taking this in as oh this is the new god to to uh to worship to worship self to yeah. always worry about what you look like. There's a reason why uh, that industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. There is a reason. Here's something. Belly, uh, Belial. Belial, one of the seven Hebrew pet tracks. Here we go. See, Satan. Yeah. So he is one of the angelics that's right next to Satan. I'm thinking that these are his top seven that he has issuing the world. Yeah. And just above above that, it has uh, mm -hmm. Avon, Evil Actions, another seven uh, Tetrak. Avon, Evil Actions, one of the seven Hebrew Tetraks. This is this is this is good. We're getting somewhere. There's mm -hmm. also another one here goes right in line with what you just said. We're, we're trying to look at these types of angels that are under these watchers. Right. Look at this. Lusters. Angels who maintain sex in the unseen world by proximity to mortals. You ever seen that sex or heard of sex magic? Yep heard of it had no dealings with it but i've read and this is a scary thing and there are people Shoot. that yeah. dibble and dabble in this um especially on october 31st and even october 30th yeah and to add to that 
nocturnal visitors for secret advice my mind automatically goes to incubus and succubus mm -hmm. yep and you do not want anything with that it says the cause of the evil habit in men and like you said also the producers of harlots amongst women i wish i wish uh i wish we get we had time or had it loaded already um but a real good jewel is the uh the testament of solomon king solomon and there's a part in there where it describes a fallen angel and solomon Sol king solomon goes into detail on how she looks and she is uh, she is well pleased and well shaped uh, to men. And she even uh, says that my job is to uh, seduce men and get them to do crazy stuff. Um, basically a sex goddess. Um, if you guys haven't read the Testament of Solomon, it's 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 great. It's heavyweight jamming, um, you know, again, be prayed up and uh covered uh before you dive into that because it uh it also has some other like crazy stuff you know that you don't want to be reading out loud as far as uh you know just different things but you know to each his own mm -hmm. power and life is in the is in the tongue death and life is in the power of the tongue and you definitely want to take your time and read these things but just for informational purposes right Look at this, we've all heard of Yeshua. I told you there's a difference between Yah, Yahuwah, and Yahusha. Yeshua, a heavenly kingdom. Right there, along with the heavenly um, realm of hell. And then you have other ones, and now Yeshua is one. It says Yeshua is the original of Iesu. Now I told you to remember that. Yep. The onset of this, Iesu, Aesus, Jesus, and it's also synonymous with Joshua. Let's get into that right now. Let's get into it. If we look at, this is going to get interesting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the subject of Preterism. Before I go into that, we mentioned that Thoth is the record of times. Times and seasons will be changed. And we know that he has vices to do these things for him in the earth realm, such as the policy, the Pope. They've been around ever since the last Caesar. They've taken on the mantle of the Caesars, basically roman empire of the world so thoth is considered the record of times why do you think we have to change the time why is time so important why is calendar so important did we ever keep a calendar back then or did we just go off of bibles dealing with the age of our foremothers and forefathers that's actually the truth right there. We didn't keep a calendar. The BC and AD timeline was created by uh, Di Dionysus. Dionysus was the one who created that BC timeline. And for a good reason. And of course, like I said, that came out to uh, right around that 1500s timeline. Now, Thoth is the record of times and seasons. Now, there's somewhere in the Word of God where we read about um, some individual who is the record of times. Now, we know Thoth, he, based on research here, he is a, a half demigod. So, the actions of him and the belief system that he has left behind has translated down the generations to someone to take on the mantle of being the record of times and seasons. If we go into Word, and look into Daniel, and it says right here, 25, it says, He shall speak pompous words 
against the Most High. He shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times and law. Intend to change times and law. Who is he? Who is this he? We have to go up. Start right here. Thus, he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. Now, this is not the New Testament. This is the old. These are our prophets speaking. Right. It says it is the fourth kingdom, fourth beast. Now, back in our study Bible. We found that one. Right here. It says, and the beast was divided into, was divided itself into four great heads and possessed the earth about, and man fell down and worshiped them. Man, man fell down and worshiped them. Number 12. And the names of the heads of the beast were Brahmin, Buddhist, Christian, and Mohammedan. Now, Mohammedan is listed as the fourth beast. Okay. Going back, it says the fourth beast is who we're talking about that intended to change the times and the law. How was this possible? Well, when it comes to the law, the entire world is basically ran off of two systems. It's either common law or civil law. A majority of the countries out there under the United Nations are under civil law, which is the Lex Fori. The Lex Fori is a stem from the Roman Catholic law. Yeah, while you're looking for that, Avery, I just wanted to bring up when you were talking about the seven tetrachs um, of uh, of Satan, uh, I automatically thought about there being seven con continents and uh, each or each one of them having it, its own uh, quote unquote kingdom over one of the seven continents and them controlling uh, some of the one third uh, you know, to go, you know, with Satan's uh, plan. You're right. Um, tetrax synonymous with the word terraforma, and that also means earth as well. Mm -hmm. Glad you brought that up. The Lex Fourier says it is the law of the country in which an action is brought. Now, if, when you guys do your research on this Lex Fourier, you're going to see that it comes from the, the Roman Roman law, all the way back to the Rome, the palpacy of the Pope. Now, I want to show you what time are we in? We need to know what time we are in when it comes to the law. If you look at this, look at this picture here. It says Anno, which is Anno Domini. We get the term AD. And the other one is BC. Sometimes AD was mistranslated as after death, after the death of Christ. So then they turned it into the CE common error. Now, if you look at this building, this is somewhere in Naples, I believe, uh, over in Florida. It could be Florida or it could be France. Now, look at the time. Look at this number here. It says D. C, 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 X, C. Okay. We can pull up a Roman numeral chart and get a good sense of what that is. So we have D, C, C. There's three C, so that's 800. And then we have X, C is right here so this is 890 this is the year 890 we all agree on that 
we go to a more recent photo, they've added an M. This is the same building, it's been refurbished. Got a nice little cafe down here. But I'm sure this is in Rome, I'm thinking. I think this is in Rome. You guys tell me down in the com in the comments there. But they've added an M here. It's no longer 890, it is M. And what is M? M alone is 1000. So now, to those that do not know what this was in the past, they, they're seeing this as in the year of 1890. Millennial. 1890. Yep. Immediately when we think of a thousand, we go back to the scriptures of Revelations, and it talks about Christ having his millennial kingdom for how long? A thousand years, where Satan is cast to a certain part in the heavenly realm called hell, but another term for that is the bottomless pit. And he's gonna remain there for a thousand years while Christ, Yahusha, right? Yahusha and his martyrs and those that are on the earth will reign with him for a thousand years. Now there's a combination of the martyrs who have their glorified body already and then there's also those who are born on the earth that are like, wow, this is it. This is it. And they're living with him. Of course, they don't live forever. They will eventually die. But there's a thousand years of that. Go ahead. Question Andrew. about that. Yes. That question about that thousand and with the M, could could that also uh, be a perverse way of saying that uh, or celebrating uh, Satan? as far as oh he's free from the thousand years good good question um i have a way to answer that if you let me i think i got a way to answer that if it doesn't you let me know and i'll try to give you another answer yeah most definitely. that's 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 an excellent question and you know our viewers are asking the same thing because it would seem like that would be homage uh, to their uh, dark, dark Lord as, mm -hmm. as far as him being released. Mm -hmm. Yep. And remember, I told you guys to keep those two words in mind. The Iesus and Jesus, Jesus. And we know that those terms are false terms for Yahusha. There's a reason for that term. Here we go. Look at this coin here. This is an ancient coin. It was minted back in around around this time. So this is not a one. This is a one. This is the font for a one. The nomination of this coin is one cent. But this is a J, a J for Jesus. Jesus. Sometimes they put this as an I. So in the era of Jesus, 989, as we saw that building was 890. Here's 989. Look at this one. This is the I. This is the I. 632. Right. If you guys want, you can take this language, which I believe is in the Latin and convert it over into English. And it's going to point to something very clear. You'll find coins like this all over the earth. Every country recognized this dating system. And it also had the word in Hebrew up top, Jehovah. Yahovah, look at this. This is an image of a sun coming out of the sky down onto the earth. There's more. Look at these. You see how they start to, to change? This is a one that we're normally used to seeing, 1783. 
1783. But over here is the J. J783, and they added a thousand years. One. J783. This is a five cent. This is a 500. But look at the I. Yep, all seeing I. Look at the I. This is when you know who is starting to come and take over. Why? Why is the entire earth, all countries, making coins like this, of this dating system, and then the all-seeing eye that we see on that great dollar bill on the pyramid is now adding a thousand years to the timeline. And these are 13 stars when you count it out. There's more. Jehovah, the sun, the sun of righteousness, Malachi 4.2, illuminating on the earth from the clouds. This is I-634. I have actually taken the liberty to go ahead and see if we can translate this. Go to Google Translate. I believe this is the Latin. So we're going to go from English actually from Latin to the English. It says, you guys get a look at that? South, and then we have S-F-T-V-I, C-T-O-R-I-A, Nostra. See what that says. S F T B I C T O R I A Nos Hail our victory. Wow. It looked like it was gonna say something else, but once you complete it, hail our victory. Look at this one. This is I-609. Jehovah, soul. Let's put that together. Jehovah, soul. Now I know what soul is in Latin. That's sun. It is sun indeed. This is an entirely different kingdom. Mm-hmm versus this one these are all over the world why are they doing this dating system why not, yeah not only that but a, a couple of the coins that you've shown uh they have some some form of uh latin i mean not latin but arabic uh or Arab, Arab, aramaic uh writing at the top of them they do look at this is Hebrew right there. This is the other yeah. side of the same coin. That's Hebrew writing saying his name, his son. Okay, now on the back of it says, this is German. And look at the date. This is a J763. Just for fun, let's translate this one. Yeah. It looks like there's some dragon wings on the side on top of them too. German. It is. <laughs> So, and then pin des freed dens Frankfurt. You know, that's a city to memorial of peace. So, this is relating to a time of peace. And what did Yahusha do when he came for a thousand years? It was a thousand years of what on earth? Peace. The entire earth is paying homage to that. Yeah. Now, yeah. And that staff, that staff right there, that's a that's a medical uh, uh, symbol right there. Mm -hmm. Now, what I say is the adding of a thousand years is the if this all took place, if, if pre preterism deals with the, 
all of the things that are that we're looking for to happen in the future that it's already been taking place it's already a part of our past that's the definition of preterism okay if that is the truth if it is then that would mean that our enemy is adding times he's changing laws to put us further in a time of what deception yeah that's what he came out that's what he's released to do everything we look at today is a form of deception sports religion marriage everything is deception distraction he's trying to take as many as he possibly can mm -hmm. because Every in his in his twisted sick mind okay well i can't i can't take on the most high uh myself or you know don't have the power at all couldn't even think of the power uh to to challenge the most high okay well what what does the most high cherish his creation his children so i'm gonna take as many as i can with me exactly what is the lord waiting for to have this final final judgment what is he waiting for he's waiting for us to realize who we are when we are so we can defeat yeah it's very important we come on one accord uh in one mind to know what is actually is happening now they have changed the times and you'll find other um depictions such as this where it was once a certain number describing a year and then in today's day it's a whole nother number and what does this thousand come from let's say it is to hide the thousand years let's say he already came and what people started doing they started having uh, these coins minted and other artifacts showing that oh it is one year after his thousand year reign oh it is the second year of his thousand year reign and so on and so on until you get up to 793 as we've seen in after his reign 632 years after his reign why so that way we would know when satan's or his, or the enemy's time is done Oh, his time that was on the earth that was for a short season, we know exactly how long that short season was. So he will distract and throw a thousand years into the timeline so you don't know that something actually happened. You do not know that we're living off of the coattails of what we read in Revelations. That could be what we're seeing here with all of this evidence. Yeah. Now, Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home when it comes to this time. We talked about time. Now we got to talk about the law. Okay. Very, very important here. Who is, well, when we first read Thoth, he told us that America was, you know, it was something that was rediscovered in the 15th century, repopulated in the 17th century, and it was ancient Atlantis. America is the land of the promise, the promised land, right? So that would mean what we have today as America has been established by some type of decree to give it the power that it has today. What was it? Well, we just read in the Bible, the fourth kingdom which is a section of that beast. There's four beasts. So the fourth kingdom is of the Mohammedan nation. I talked about the Moors in previous videos. The Sultan, this goes into the Al Morocco Empire, the Morocco Empire. It says it's North America today. It's, it's Talmari, Tamari, Tamari Khans. But before that, that was very synonymous with the Moroccan Empire, not Morocco over in Africa that was established in the 1900s. No, we're talking about the ancient al Morocco that rules the world. We've heard time and time again, especially from President Obama, Joe Biden, uh, when they've taken their visits over down to uh, Marrakesh, they said that Morocco was the first country to ever recognize the United States in 1777. 
Why is that? Because of treaties. I want you to take a look at this right here. This is called the Treaty of Marrakesh. Now, when you translate this, first of all, you're never going to find this on the internet. You have to go inside of that law library. Which one? I'm not going to tell you. But you got to go inside these law libraries, know how to speak Latin and Arabic in order to get in access to that. I want you to go back to John Wick 3. In the very beginning, they had him walk into a library where it had writings like this on the top of the walls. And he went to the librarian and gave her a certain passcode that will allow him access to a certain part of the library. Notice when he's in that library, it is just him and another assassin is trying to kill him. There is no other person in that section of the library. Those type of things do exist. These are called the chancellors of the great universities and state colleges, and they are the gatekeepers that hide information. Once this writing in Arabic was translated into English, they changed it from J202, which is 202 years after the millennial period on earth. Let's just go with this logic for right now. 202 years after, and they've changed it to July 18, 1787. This is the Treaty of Marrakesh. Isaiah, will you do the honors and read this, please? Yeah. The following is the Treaty of Marrakesh, 1787. In the name of God, the merciful, there exists strength and power only by God. From the servant of God, Mohammed Ibn Abed Allah, may God help him. To the President of the United States of America, salvation be upon him who follows the righteous path. We received your letter in which you propose a peace treaty. We are informing you that our intention is also to maintain peaceful relations with you. We have also contacted Tunis and Tripoli regarding what you solicited from Our Majesty and all your requests will materialize, God willing. Written on the 5th, 15th, Duhu al Qadda, 1202, July 18th, 1787, the United States and the Morocco share an uninterpreted period of friendship, uninterrupted, I'm sorry, period of friendships stating starting with morocco being the first nation to recognize the independence of the united states and to have signed 1787 a treaty of friendship and cooperation the first of its kind concluded by the young republic the american treaty of friendship with morocco known as the treaty of marrakesh was signed in 1786 and had been drafted by Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams. This was while Great Britain was turning its back on the young republic, ending its protection of all American trade ships sailing in the Mediterranean Sea. As a result, Americans were suffering heavy losses from the vicious pirate attacks in the area. Great Britain had even encouraged acts of piracy of vessels flying the American flag with no friends in the region and no Navy to protect its ships. The United States was left defenseless and according to Thomas Jefferson, incapable of exporting almost one third of its wheat and one fourth of other items produced by the seven states of the Union. Attempts by the United States to solicit protection and support from France, however, failed since Britain had a stronger position than France in the area. Another attempt was made and again failed by turning to the Netherlands in 1782. On February 20th, 1778, 
Sultan Sadi Muhammad bin Abdullah issued a declaration notifying all consuls and European merchants in Tangier, Salih, and Mogador, Mogador that henceforth all vessels flying the American flag might freely enter the Moroccan ports and enjoy in them the same privileges and immunities uh, with those of the other nations with whom the Morocco maintains peace. In response to the Moroccan Sultan's initiative, the United States Congress established the A Committee to write the draft of agreement that took a few years to enact. When Benjamin Franklin left Paris in 1785, Thomas Jefferson became the U.S. Minister to France. Thereafter, negotiations began between John Adams in London and Jefferson in Paris to form the final form of the Treaty of Marrakesh that ultimately was ratified on July 18, uh, 1787. Later, in 1820, the Sultan gave further evidence of his friendship with America by presenting the United States with a palace in Tangier. The building is still used by American consul in that city, and America is the only country ever to receive such an honor from the government of Morocco. Right, thank you. So December 1777 is the number one year that presidents use when they give homage to Morocco. December 1777 was when uh, the Sultan had made an oral agreement with the ambassadors of the United States to recognize them. And then we see on February 20th, 1778, a year later, he actually issues the declaration for this. Finalized and ratified and done July 18th, 1787. Now, as you see up here, they don't put this as a I or a J, it's a one adding a thousand years to that timeline. Something very interesting. Now we know why they, they, he's added a thousand years, right? It's to hide this millennial period if it did take place. Okay, because people st started taking an account of how many years after this millennial period that took place, how many years has, has gone by since it happened. So that way they know how long the season is for this enemy to go out and deceive the world. Now, they added a thousand years. It's from J202 to 1202. And then they have added 1,585 years to that, making it 1787. Why is that? We know about the first 1,000. Now we have to take an account for the other 585 years. If I were to go to Google and say, when was slavery abolished? If I can spell, you're gonna get a year 1865. So we know that the slavery in America was abolished in 1865, according to the general information that we get in Google. When was slavery abolished? December 6, 1865 that number in your mind we go back we see that they've added a total of let's just be precise if that was a j they've added a thousand making it 1202 and if they've added a thousand how do we get to 1287 from that thousand they've added 585 years to the calendar and this is what the was established back in the, the dark ages the renaissance period where we get that that 1500s everything comes out of the 1500s even the first king james bible so if slavery was abolished 1865 and we were to subtract 585 years that's going to put us right at 1280 so give or take 80 years you got a thousand to hide the millennial period and you got plus or minus 585 years to add the slavery account into history and also to add the newcomers 
the people from Britain, you know, they came from that Dutch East India trading company to establish themselves over in the Americas to take over. They've added this additional time to the timeline. So it's affecting the times and it's also affecting the laws. Why? So that they can change the laws, they can write themselves in, and we wouldn't know who we are or where we are. When Isaiah read this, uh, there was a section in here that talked about um, commodities such as phosphorus and such as wheat. Something happened where the greatest empire in the world sought out alliance with the United States or anybody who was available at that time. Something happened. In this article, uh, they talked about wheat. It says right here, United States was left defenseless and, according to Thomas Jefferson, incapable of exporting almost one third of its wheat and one fourth other items produced by the seven states of the Union. Let's, let's look at how they're really playing with I. We go to the Morocco World News. It's going to give us more insight to why the Sultan did what he did as far as seeking a treaty with the United States. It says one main direct reason behind the Sultan's interest in the Americans can be traced back to early 1766, when Sidi Mohammed bin Abdullah released a fatwa concerning the exportation of wheat to Europeans through the port of Fadala, which the Sultan built for that particular purpose. The Sultan allowed his people to sell their crops, especially wheat, to Europeans, who in turn bought and shipped large amounts of wheat and food supplies abroad. In this context, Massan states that the exportation of wheat increased between 1770 and 1774. This is when the Articles of Association was put together. Between 1770 and 1774 towards Portugal, Spain, and France. In 1774, 100 quintal or quintar of wheat was exported to Spain and almost the same quantity was exported to France. Indeed, the exportation of wheat to European to Europe affected the whole country, especially after successive years of drought. The rain did not fall for over seven years from 1776 to 1782 and the swarms of locusts came from south and completely destroyed the crops. The country knew a serious food crisis due to the plague of locusts and drought. The prices of wheat increased rapidly and poor people were unable to buy enough amounts. According to the French consul Louis de Chenier, in one of his letters, the reserves of wheat decreased and in stores and its price increased three times in 1775. Louis de Chenier describes the chaotic situation of Morocco in details. He describes the effects of a series of famines which brought the infectious diseases, plagues of locusts and successive years of drought. The locusts ravaged the empire of Morocco, not the state of Morocco, the empire of Morocco, which was the world, especially after the year 1778. To put in Louis de Chenier's words, clouds of locusts came from the south and devoured a part of the harvest. In 1779, the quantity of young locusts eaten up the whole country and nothing that is green on earth could escape the voracity of these insects. The, chill, the, the consequences of swarms of locusts and successive years of drought were so fatal 
the lands produced no harvest, and the people began to feel a dearth. Their cattle died with hunger, people perished of indigestible food and want, fathers sold their children, and husbands bestowed their wives in marriage. Wives, plural. Husbands bestowed their wives. The Sultan's exportations of wheat and food supplies to Europeans worsened the situation of the country and made the crisis more serious. George Hulse related the export of wheat to the Sultan's need for firearms, suggesting that when Sultan Muhammad had sufficient weaponry, he no longer allowed the sale of grain. Now, you guys, we're talking about the Empire of Morocco, the fourth beast of the Mohammedan nation. And we know it was very custom in those nations to have many wives. Where have we heard this before? The seven years of drought, the swarming of locusts, all of this were Fathers sold their children and they gave away their wives because they were so desperate for food and shelter. Where have we heard this before? Why was this treaty put together? And why did they change the times in this treaty? What are they hiding? Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Where have we heard this before? You guys know it. You know where I'm going. Genesis what? Genesis uh, 41. Genesis 41 verse is verse 27. Genesis 41, 27. This looks very, very familiar. Here we go. I'll start a little bit above that. Let's go to 17. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt, such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven heads came up, came up on one stalk full and good. Then behold, seven heads withered then and blighted by the east wind sprang up after them, and the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one, and the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt, but after them, seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt, America. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land. 
to collect one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain, wheat under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Pharaoh is another word for Sultan. Let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. Remember the laws of first mention. If Egypt was America and America is um, Egypt today, just because we moved it from where it is now over to where we think it is does not mean that we are talking about Egypt over there in this book of Genesis. We're talking about Tameri, Ameri Khan, the Khans. Are we so far removed from the times of the Bible? Is that why the enemy is changing the times and the laws? We have evidences to bring us to what we've accumulated, but this sounds very, very familiar. Talking about one fifth of the produce. And we read a certain portion here in this text as well. This link and all other links that we discussed in this study tonight will be in the description. Isaiah, thank you again for joining me. I appreciate your time really do helping me to break that break this stuff down people love your engagement uh, please everybody leave your comments down below I want to hear from you guys out of all this evidence what do you think what do you think about Thoth what do you think about his influence down the generations what do you think about the one who's changing the times is it possible that Yahusha has already come is it possible that we are living off the coattails of the millennial period. Do we have even more evidence to show that? Yes, there's tons of evidence that can present a pretty good argument as to that. And now that we understand what the beast is, the four great beasts and how they come together as one to initiate the mark. And the mark has so many different variations, so many different variations. So we're gonna get into that Today was Enoch chapter 1 through 6. We will continue with chapter 7. Uh, who knows where we'll stop. But until then, we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us.